Good afternoon, staff and students, and welcome to this, uh, another installment of uh, our OSSLT support, troubleshooting strategies for multiple choice questions on the literacy test. Welcome back from uh, what I hope was a very restful March break and an enjoyable March break. Uh, as uh, I'm sure you're all aware, the literacy test is just over one week away. So uh, in preparation for that, in anticipation of it, we will have another video tutorial this week on strategies for multiple choice questions. This week's example will be a little bit different, so hopefully we're picking up new strategies, new ideas, um, useful things that will help us as we encounter these multiple choice questions on the OSSLT. Before I begin, I just want to say thank you to all of the staff and all the students who have given feedback, good or bad, about these videos. Uh, again, they're designed to target an area of the literacy test where there was uh, some very specific need. And what we hope is that they've uh, somehow helped and made a difference and they've uh, moved you a little bit closer to success. Without any further delay, we are going to look at this week's example. Before we do begin, uh, perhaps a little review is in order after our one week hiatus. Remember, uh, the word that we've been using to describe our work is uh, troubleshooting strategies. And if you recall, troubleshooting meant applying or looking to apply different possible solutions, unlike different parts of your, or other parts of the OSSLT. For example, the news report or the series of paragraphs expressing an opinion, there isn't a formula for multiple choice questions. Instead, there are tools that we have, strategies, tactics, if you'd like to call them that, and we try to see which best fit for a given question. And so these are the tactics that we've considered. There are obviously more, but these are the ones that have seemed useful and trusty thus far. Let's review them before we look at today's example. Uh, the first tactic or strategy, do not skim and scan your multiple choice questions. Read them aloud, not loudly, but make sure that you are extracting or covering all the detail in your multiple choice questions. And that's a strategy we've sort of applied probably every week. Uh, strategy number two, we haven't used very often. It usually works um, when multiple choice questions are based on a narrative selection. You want to see if you can answer the question first without looking to see what your answers are. So if the question is based on recall or on memory, you may just want to uh, jog your own memory, see if you can answer the question without uh, looking at any of the multiple choice options. And that potentially, possibly, would limit any confusion that you might have if you looked at four options and, and wasn't sure which one would apply. Uh, strategy number three, looking for any clues or direction in the question itself. This was an important strategy for the two previous examples of our video tutorials where our multiple choice questions were based on readings and the questions themselves directed us to very specific parts in the readings. And so we want to be able to follow those cues. If a multiple choice question asks us uh, about something in paragraph 7, for example, we want to make sure that we refer specifically back to paragraph 7. The example is there. Uh, strategies number 4 and 5 are probably the most handy, useful, versatile uh, elimination and substitution. You can use them independently. Some questions, um, it may be easier just to use elimination or substitution, but you could also use them interdependently. You could eliminate first and substitute second. And we've seen that these strategies have a, a, a sort of a broad appeal. You can use them in, in many contexts. Uh, strategies number six and seven, uh, reminders probably, not to take too much time. You don't want to stare at multiple choice questions too long for fear that sort of confusion, anxiety, worry, delay sets in uh, and really holds you back. But you don't want to leave any questions blank. So in a worst case scenario where you might not be able to use any of these strategies confidently, you will have to venture an educated guess. We're trying to avoid that. You certainly don't, don't want to leave anything blank, though. So a review of our troubleshooting strategies, and we'll see how well they can apply to this week's question. Okay, so this week's question is a little bit different than, as I've said, the, the questions that we've looked at uh, in the two previous video tutorials. Those tutorials were based on narrative selections. We read uh, a narrative text. If you recall, it was about a middle-aged man who was starting a second career, and he was, uh, he was receiving guidance or counsel from his daughter, who was helping him with his anxiety. And this is a very different question, and it's important to note that because our strategies are going to be different. For instance, after we apply strategy one, and we read the question very, very thoroughly, uh, it reads, choose the sentence that is written correctly. 
I have four sentences here. I have sentence A, I have sentence B, and I have sentence C. Okay, what I know right away is a couple of things. One, there is no hint or reference to anything outside this question. I'm not being asked to find any markers. Um, if you remember the question from uh, two weeks ago and, uh, well, the, the two video tutorials, um, it asked us to go back into a text and to identify paragraph markers, to notice that there was a title missing in the reading selection, to look at the picture. So we were putting together, synthesizing, integrating a lot of different bits of information. We're not going to do that here. There is no outside reference to this question, all right? Which means what? It means that this question is a uh, grammatical conventions question. It is a question about grammar and punctuation and the proper use of it. And, and that's important because it's going to really determine what strategies we use, okay? So I'm going to apply strategy number one, but I'm not going to look to strategy number two uh, or strategy number three. Strategy number three, remember, is try to figure out the answer before you read it all. I'm not going to do that. There's no narrative selection. I'm not going to look for any hints or examples. I'm just going to read all of the, the options of sentences. So choose the sentence that is written correctly. What time is it in Sao Paulo, Brazil? Put the wrapper in the recycling bin. I am so tired that I could sleep in class. Will the hockey game be over in an hour? All right, so as I've said, I realize right now that there's no external reading associated with this question. I've got to answer this question based on all the information that I have in front of me. And I know that this is a question about grammar and punctuation and proper conventions. So what strategies can I use? Well, the first thing I want to be aware of is that this is requiring me to access previous knowledge. I've got to somehow remember and call on what I know about all of the punctuation that I can see here. And I can see that there's punctuation. Here is an exclamation mark, here is a question mark. Now, as I recall prior learning or what I may know about punctuation, something comes to mind. And what comes to mind is, I really don't know very much about exclamation marks. I mean, I use them, but I'm not always confident about how I use them. So I'm going to sort of pull back from focus on that because it's not easy for me to make sense of exclamation marks and how they're always used correctly. What I also know is I'm much more comfortable with question marks. I know the question marks appear at the end of sentences that are asking someone. Somebody is asking something of somebody else. So I'm quite confident about question marks. So if that's the case, that's the prior knowledge that I'm going to access. I'm going to use my knowledge about question marks to help me sort through which of these sentences is written correctly. All right. So um, two things that I'm aware of. Um, I'm going to start looking at sentence C because that, uh, that sentence has a question mark. And sentence C reads, I am so tired that I could sleep in class. There's a question mark at the end of that sentence. I know that question marks come at the end of sentence that are questions. They request something. They're asking something. Nothing is being asked here. This is a statement about being so tired that somebody can sleep in class. Because the statement isn't a sentence and there is a question mark at the end of it, I know that this sentence cannot be written correctly. Okay? And again, that's based on my previous knowledge about question marks. So I eliminated option number C. Um, I'm also going to look at uh, sentence D because sentence D sounded to me like a sentence. I'll read it again. Will the hockey game be over in an hour? Is that a question? It most certainly is. If it is a question and it's missing a question mark, I know that question marks should be at the end of sentences that are requesting or asking something. There's no question mark at the end of sentence D. Therefore, I know that sentence D isn't the correct option either. All right, I'm going to move on to sentence A. And remember, I said this is the one that sort of confused me. I know a little bit about exclamation points, but I'm not perfectly sure of how to use them uh, in every situation. So let's read the sentence. What time is it in Sao Paulo, Brazil? So here's what I realize. There is an exclamation point there. And maybe the exclamation point is fine. Maybe it's okay to have an exclamation point at the end of that sentence. But what's not okay, and this is key, is that that sentence, sentence A, is a question. If you ask somebody what time it is, you are asking them a question, a request. But if you ask somebody a question, you have to have a question mark at the end of the sentence. 
this is a trick. What I'm essentially being asked to figure out is, is it okay if the exclamation point is there, but there is no question mark? The answer to that is no. If the sentence is a question, there should be a question mark. Because there is no question mark, I know that sentence A cannot be written correctly. This means that, by definition, the only sentence that is written correctly is sentence B. Put the wrapper in the recycling bin. It's a simple sentence. It begins with a capital. It ends with a period. And it is declarative, uh, or it's instructive, rather. Put the wrapper in the recycling bin. I know that that sentence must be written correctly because A, C, and D are not. Okay, that is it for today's video tutorial. I hope it helps, ladies and gentlemen, and hopefully we will see you one more time before the literacy test. Have a nice day.